to another episode of Women Investing in Women. Robin and I, week after week, sit down and talk to different women from different parts of the world, different generations, different walks of life, to showcase who have lifted them up and who they are lifting up so that as a community of global women, we are exemplifying the importance of investing in each other. Investment is not money. Investment is time. Investment is talent. Investment is mentoring. So there's so much more to investing in lifting up another person or a group of people than just giving or taking money, right? So we want to go beyond that and truly build a community of global women who understand the importance of a sense of abundance because there is enough for everybody and there is the need for all hands on deck if we are going to change the trajectory of the world today. So thank you, our audience and our live guest for joining our conversation today. Keeping on the theme today, our guest is Sunny Sunshine. Sunny, welcome to Women Investing in Women. Hello, thanks so much for having me. Thank you. So Sunny comes to us from the group um, Leadership Global, and we have brought to you a few different women from that group who are truly investing in each other and building collaborative communities in order to help each other be the best, best version of them. So as we kick off this conversation, Sunny, talk to us about how did you get to a place of entrepreneurship and how do you serve the community in that capacity? Yeah, absolutely. I have a, a fairly common story of coming from a world of corporate. I know there's a lot of women who've had that, that experience. Um, so I had a very long career in corporate. I was a leader in strategy for Fortune 50 companies with a background in tech. And I had a really awesome opportunity where I was able to walk away from that and have my future secured. So I consider myself retired and I, th I thought I was going to be bored and do nothing for a long time. And three months later, I found myself starting a business. And the way my business came about is people kept asking me to pick my brain, which was great. But after a couple of months of that, I started to feel a little bitter and resentful about it. And I realized I'm not giving them a way to pay me. I'm not giving them a way to exchange energy with me. So it's not really appropriate or fair of me to be bitter that they're using me because I'm allowing that to happen. So I created a small business in order to be able to make sure there was an equal exchange of energy so that I could give and feel like I was receiving back. That is really a fascinating answer because, um, first of all, being very self-aware that you were feeling resentful and why you were feeling resentful, and then realizing the medium of exchange of money for your services, money for the, the hard won knowledge that you have acquired through your life experience and figuring things out. It's interesting because we refer to money as currency. So there's a current. So there's a flow between you and the people and the money represents uh, a, a mechanism by which they value you. You accept that value. And in exchange, you give them something uh probably more valuable than the money that you gave them. I'm fascinated to, or curious, I should say, to find out uh, more about why it is that you, see, or, or what kind of women you attract. And you mentioned that you tend to attract a lot of women in your business. And that's one of the reasons why we're having you on our show. Thank you so much for coming, is that you do attract and uplift and support women. So tell us what it is, what is it about your business or about you that you think tends to uh, attract women to your organization? Yeah, thanks. Um, I think a lot of why women are attracted to my business is because I play in the space between masculine and feminine energy, not gender, but energy. And our world has so much masculine energy in it right now. I think we're craving access to and real world ways to apply a feminine approach to things. And so I do attract some men, but it's mostly women because we don't have a lot of a blueprint for how to stand in our feminine power. And I tend to attract women who are fairly early in that exploration and help them kind of figure out 
how can they be powerful without being masculine? That is a very impactful statement. I come from the Eastern tradition where the creator is half masculine energy, half feminine energy. And we all embody both and bringing both to bear in um, respective genders is necessary, right? So coming from that culture and seeing the Western culture of expecting women to exhibit masculine traditions and customs and practices in a workplace is rough because a lot of women are different at home and they're completely another person at work. So I am curious to find out how do you help them tap into their feminine energy and what are some of the challenges they face in showing up in their feminine energy because there is excuse me because there is a taboo in the workplace to show up in your feminine energy somebody like me who's eastern showing up in our feminine energy is cultural they will accept it for 30 years i walked into a corporate world, Fortune 100 world with a nose ring. Nobody questions me because it's my tradition. But an American woman walks in and they won't get the job, right? So we have such different ways of treating people. I'm curious, how do Western women navigate that? The big question. Um, I think the biggest thing that I have encountered is that women think that in order to exhibit power, that they have to be aggressive, that they have to fit into the mold of what is around them, that they have to maybe, and to be feminine, that we have to be meek, that we have to be agreeable, right? Feminine's talking about feelings, masculine's talking about what we think. And so debunking that is an inside job, right? We can talk about it culturally all we want, but we need women who are willing to dig into what that means for them and figure out how to have both exist in the same time. I can be powerful and feminine and aggressive. I can be masculine and, and, uh, and be meek, right? Like those things aren't mutually exclusive. Um, but I think it's an inside job. We have to focus on our own self-awareness and what feels powerful and true for us in order to stand in that power in a public setting. And oftentimes from the lens of power in corporate, it's a matter of stripping away masculine or feminine and just figuring out what's true for you, regardless of the perception or the boxes or the, the, the piece of the spectrum it might fit on. Like what feels true and powerful and empowering for you? And sometimes that can take a long time to uncover because we have so many lenses from society that we've put on that. Uh, that's really a fascinating answer. How do you help women debunk that within themselves? How do you help them go through the process of saying, I can have power, you know, which we think of as masculine and still be nice and I can still be nice and yet get things done and hold people to high standards uh, and, and maybe nice isn't the right word. Uh, <laughs> I normally don't swear, especially on the air, but to be not bitchy, okay? How can you be powerful and hold people to a high standard and and I guess still be nice <laughs> to answer that? Yeah, well, personally, I always say I'm committed to being kind. And sometimes the kind thing does not appear to be nice, right? The kind thing is to let someone go because they're impacting themselves and the team, right? So I focus on kindness. But as far as debunking that, I focus a lot on supporting women in self-awareness on going within. That's where the intuitive part of intuitive strategist, which is what I am, right? We work not just on intuition, but on how to intuitively navigate the world, which requires a lot of self-awareness. So I use a lot of different modalities, including archetypes and Reiki and astrology. And I work with a lot of different well-known teachers, materials, and my specialty with people is how do you take that information and move it from new information in your head to an experience that you're living in your body in your day-to-day -day life? And it's a lot of noticing because the more you notice, the more you can choose how you're going to be with what you're noticing. Hmm. 
that's interesting, Sunny. So what's coming up for me is uh, just a couple of uh, conversations ago, you mentioned that it's okay for women to be aggressive, right? So my question is, is it aggressive or assertive that is needed? And there's a big difference between the two. And aggressiveness, masculine or feminine, doesn't wear well in an organization or in a society. But assertiveness does because that's about drawing lines and setting boundaries and being aware of ourselves and our environment and making sure that those boundaries are not crossed, right? So how do you distinguish between assertive and aggressive and show people and guide them towards not crossing over because the minute it becomes aggressive, it can become toxic? I love this question. And I think you're bringing up an important nuance that often gets stepped over today is the importance of language, right? So I use the word aggressive because that's the buzzword in culture. And to your point, I think assertive is what we're really talking about, right? And there's a nuanced difference between those that really shows up in the English language. And that's actually something that I often encourage people to get really comfortable and roll around in is the different words and language. We do a lot of word studies and looking at etymology or the history of a word to find the exact right word that describes the way of being you're wanting to embody. And to your point, I think that there's a, there is a difference between aggressive and assertive. I think both have their, their time and place. But for me, the difference is that aggressive is that masculine energy. If there's only room for one of us at the top, so I need to push my way there. Whereas assertive is standing in my truth that I'm going to get everybody to the top and I'm not going to let you push me down so that you can be the one that succeeds. So there is a fine difference there. And I think language is an important thing that could use a little bit more attention and airtime for us as a culture. Uh, I love that because there is a phrase from Dr. Cooper Ryder, who uh, created the Appreciative Inquiry uh, form of change, organizational change. Um, words create worlds. So words create worlds. And I love that you go into word study and what do words mean and how do words fit on us. Um, so I'm wondering, what have been some of the challenges that you've run into in first of all, creating this business, uh, both internally and externally, and how have you been able to use that concept of words and creating space at the top? I love the notion of creating a lot of space at the top. Uh, not just there's not just room for one person at the top, um, but r making more room at the top. How have you, what have been some of the challenges in creating the business and creating the, the mindset of abundance at the top? Yeah, I think that as a mentor, coach, guide, everything that we do is a, a classroom for us, right? Every client I attract has something to teach me as much as I can guide them. And so in creating my own business, I think I've really just been given a playground to stay constant in the conversation of what I am guiding other people through, right? So there's, there's conversations of, am I powerful enough? Am I being arrogant? Am I standing in my masculine energy and being arrogant and egotistical and thinking that I can help other people and guide other people? Or am I standing in my truth and offering support and being collaborative? Sometimes that line feels really fuzzy. Um, another challenge that I often experience as a business owner is how much American marketing in and Western marketing is based on scarcity and lack. And that's not, in my opinion, a feminine approach, right? I want to be collaborative. There's enough room for everybody. So how do I attract people into my business without using some of those scarcity and lack tactics, right? Limited time offer, only a certain amount of spots. There's just certain buzzwords that are really popular in my industry that don't feel good. And so those are challenges that I've had to navigate and face over the past 10 years or so that my business has been around, how to stay in, in my power in those, even if it's not what's normal. That That is a very, very interesting perspective you're sharing. And as you stand in your power and stay grounded in it as you build and let your business flourish, what are some of the challenges you have faced Given the construct of the underlying society, let's face it, fear, anger, and hate are three things that drive 
people into action, right? Not compassion, not kindness, not love, not acceptance, right? None of that does. So when it is that kind of a psychological development stage of a society, how do you navigate it and still stay true to who you are as a being? Because in there would be insights for other women. Because a lot of times people say, I need to do this till I get there. And once I get there, I will do it different. But the reality is if you've sold your soul to get there, now you don't have a soul left to get back to. Somebody else has to transform you, right? And that reality is lost. I'm curious to see how do you keep it and what are some of the challenges you've faced? Yeah, I think one of the big lessons for me is that at least for what I do, it's a long game. People tend to be in my sphere for years sometimes before they're ready to work with me. Um, so the traditional marketing funnel of a freebie and then a low paid offer and a high paid offer isn't going to work for my business because people aren't going to convert using air quotes, right? Convert that quickly uh, because they need time. They're likely to find me before they're ready for me. And I just have to continue to stay there like the mama bear, you know, arms open and available for when they are. The other thing is that currently my mentality is sometimes I have to show them what they think they want until I can help them uncover what I can see that they need. And so there are times where I talk differently than maybe feels a hundred percent aligned for me in order to help other people understand. And I know when it starts to feel inappropriate, right? You know, so an example of that might be leading with a statement and then immediately following it up with my truth, right? The statement gets them to stop scrolling and then the truth gets them to stay, right? I don't stay in that conversation that doesn't feel true for very long at all, right? It's just enough to get people to stop and think. Yeah, uh, that's very interesting. <laughs> I've been on a few webinars talking about, you know, how social media works, how the algorithms work, uh, how to get yourself boosted in the algorithms, et cetera, et cetera. And so we have all of those realities, yet we also have the reality that you're talking about of staying in your truth and staying consistent, um, having integrity, uh, integrity in who you are and how you present yourself. I especially loved your notion that we're that you are in it for the long for the long haul, you know, that, that you're in it for the long game. And how do you help women? Um, whether they actually stay in business with you or not, how do you help them get the notion that they are in it for the long haul for themselves? That this, the continual evolution, you know, learning from you, learning from others. How do you get women to, I, I guess the phrase that's popping into my head, into my head right now is being a lifelong learner. That's actually one of the character strengths, uh, love of learning, one of the character strengths from the VIA Character Institute um, survey. And how do you help women move into that long haul view for themselves? Yeah, I so I tend to attract people who already identify as lifelong learners, who are you know continuously curious, continuously seeking. Um, as far as how we get into that from a spiritual perspective and from a, how we do life perspective, um, none of my classes are short. I don't, I do very few one day, you know, couple hour things. Most of my things are two to three months long. So when they join with me, I'm already showing them, like, I can't give you the result you're asking for quickly. I talk a lot about, there's no life hacks here. I don't have any silver bullets, right? So I attract people who are already looking for that. Um, and stories, right? There's lots and lots and lots of stories outside of my own as, as people who haven't had their big moment until later in life, right? Or who had to fail however many times to get where they're going. Um, so part of it's stories to see yourself and other people. Part of it is attracting people who are already at that mindset for me. Um, and I think part of it is is creating community where they can 
they get more than just that met, right? Because you're connecting with other people, but also you're seeing other people on their journey and how long it's taken them and how satisfying it is to stick with it and to see your world shift and transform. That is beautifully said, Sunny. So as I'm listening to this, what's coming up for me is what are some of the transformations you have watched happen and how has that transformed you? Because you can't change a life and not be changed by it, right? Yeah, thank you for that. That's such a great question. What comes to mind immediately is I was talking to a longtime client of mine yesterday um, and she has transformed who she shows up in, who she shows up as in life. Um, she was sharing how she's a lot more peaceful. She's going through a major life transition right now. And she is so solid. She is like, I'm reflecting constantly. I'm noticing where my reactions are coming from. You know, what's causing that negative reaction. I'm able to nurture that part of myself and then have conversations with the people around me coming from a grounded place. I'm over here like, girl, that's amazing. I don't, I don't do that all the time. Like the fact that you're in this major upset and you're being able to do that is so amazing. It's so inspiring to me. Um, I've watched people transform their careers and move from leadership roles where they felt really compressed to leadership roles where they feel really empowered and expansive and get to create amazing things. Um, and I've, I've watched people go from feeling lost in their own lives to feeling like they've met themselves again and remembering how they can be their own best friend. So it's just really lovely to watch people. I get to witness people's becoming. And that is such a lovely reminder to me that I'm always becoming. Uh, that is so beautiful hearing you, hearing you uh, share all of that. And once again, every interview goes flying by and we glance at the clock. And we're like, oh my gosh, you know, 25 minutes has flown by. Uh, we absolutely would love um, you to share how people can get a hold of you so that other women can uh, find out about what you do. And so if you can share, you know, basically how, how women can get a hold of you. Yeah, absolutely. My business's name is Wildflower Strategy. And so wildflowerstrategy.com is my website. And if you go to social.wildflowerstrategy.com, you'll get all the links to all my social, even a link to schedule a phone call with me if that appeals to you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Sunny Sunshine. It's been a beautiful conversation. Thank you for spending some time with us this morning to bring your story, bring your message to our community and in the process, lift up our community. And to our audience out there, you heard the conversation today. Remember the masculine energy and the feminine energy is already inside of you. We are not whole until we take the totality of energy inside of us, channel it the right way, and harness it to live our purpose. Because we're not just a body, we're a soul. The soul is the essence of the energy. And if our soul is not lined up with our body, we are never going to show up authentically. We are not going to be happy or fulfilled. And we're not going to be able to win or earn trust and authenticity. So for the very selfish reason itself, we each need to get in touch with the divine within us. And that's where the masculine energy and feminine energy come together to give us that opportunity, give us that springboard. So take the time, make the time to take that introspective journey and connect with who you truly are. And then from that place of connection, step into the world and light up the world like it was Christmas every day. <laughs>